Morning. Well, I thought I would finish up this side of the wall by uh, painting uh, before I moved into the drama room and start insulating from the other side. Buckle up for safety as I give you a day in the life of online. No, not online. I'm actually there. Facilities maintenance. And to do the job, I could brush it on, I could roll it on, but I'm going to elect to spray it because there are a lot of little nooks and crannies that uh, brushing and rolling would take a lot more time. And I think the quickest way to do this will be to spray it. And I think I have enough paint. I've got about three quarters of a gallon of the paint that I need. I've added a little bit of water to thin it down just a bit because this latex paint is pretty thick otherwise to blow through a sprayer. I think I've got a good consistency here and I was wondering at first or thinking that I might not have enough paint. But when you think about it, all I'm actually painting, because it's just that strip up there, right? All I'm actually painting is one sheet of drywall, one four by eight sheet. It's just stretched out over a long distance. So three quarters of a gallon should be enough. Now I do have another uh, half a can or half a five gallon pail uh, over at the elementary school that I could use, but I'm gonna live on the edge. I'm gonna take a chance and hit it with some paint right now and hope that I make it to the end. Now the last thing I need is to uh, get a bunch of chunks in my paint because I don't want to jam up my paint sprayer. So I've uh, stirred the paint well. I've dropped in a basically a screened spout that will filter out uh, uh, any chunks. And make sure the bucket that you're transferring things into is clean as well. Yeah, because that is running through a screen, it's going to be a slow pour. So I'm just going to set that up and leave it for a while and uh, let it do its thing. I'm running a long extension cord uh, to power my sprayer. And uh, I don't want the weight of that cord to be hanging off the back of the gun. So I've tied the cord off to the top of the ladder so that essentially I'm plugging into my ladder. Uh, in that way, the gun will be much lighter and freer and easier to uh, maneuver. And I've also made sure to tie it off on the non-step side. I'm gonna load my gun with what I've got so far and then I'll just continue to let it uh, drizzle. Definitely gonna need more than what I've got out of here so far.
there's still some paint in here. So I'll keep going. Okay, this is working quite well. And there's actually very little overspray, if any at all. I covered Eric's iPad here on the wall just to make sure it wouldn't get paint on it and probably didn't even need to do that. I do hope I can glean a little bit more paint out of that uh, bucket though because I am about a third of the way and uh, I think I'm gonna need a little bit more than what I have in the hopper of the spray gun. In case anybody's wondering, I'm just using a basic Wagner spray gun that I bought on sale a couple years ago. I don't think the gun itself really matters if you're gonna spray. What matters is that you look after the gun. So when you're done using it, and I mean every time, thoroughly clean it. If you don't, you'll pay for that. You'll uh, have to basically take everything apart and you might get it working again, but if you let the paint dry in the gun, you might as well just go out and buy a new gun. And I don't know if you can notice, but my gun is always in motion whenever I pull the trigger. Uh, if you are not moving and you pull the trigger, you're gonna get a glob of paint that's gonna run. So always be moving. And I am now two thirds of the way done. I've got one, two, three, four more sections to do. Remember there were 12 altogether. And I am starting to run low, I can tell that. So hopefully what's been dribbling in that bucket back there while I've been up here doing this, uh, I've collected enough to Add to what I've got here to finish the job. Wow, we made it. There was enough paint to just get the job done. And remember, the job isn't finished till the cleanup is done. How's this for a bird's eye view? So obviously I'm back in the drama room and I'm on the other side of the wall um, from where I was installing that drywall fire break over here. However, this is not the back side of the drywall. This is a steel beam that all the roof trusses connect to. I think from a fire protection fire stop status, uh, we are now good with the 5 8 drywall, completely sealing everything up. So now this is just an effort to do what I can to try and um, minimize as much sound transfer as well. And because I can't effectively get into this cavity, let me turn my, my light on my phone so you can see how narrow that access is at this point. There. You see that? I can't even fit my finger in there like it's it tapers down to less than a quarter of an inch 
here there's about half an inch of space that I can just barely fit my fingertip through. So while I could possibly inject some spray foam into this area here, it's really only about four or five feet. There's no way I can properly fill the whole cavity behind there. On the other hand, if I get hungry while I'm up here, Well, I'm gonna give it a go with uh, spray foam at first and see if I can uh, manage to get some up into that top corner uh, and fill the void where it's accessible. After that, I have a feeling that I am going to need to take um, mineral wool insulation, cut it into four inch wide strips and friction fit it uh, up into the, the notch it's created by the top of the wall here and that steel beam and then the underside of uh, the roof creates this little uh, u-shaped channel or c-shaped channel okay what i've got here is my uh, spray foam of the fireblock variety and just a bottle of water uh, that i'm going to mist i don't know the mad science behind this but um, what they tell you is that uh, it cures better when it's damp. So let's hope they know what they're talking about. The challenge with this one is climbing up and getting into the space. That's one challenge. And I also can't invert the can. It just won't. So I have to try and use it sideways see if that works at all. So if we can fill this void. That might work. <laughs> so much is in the way up here. Ay, ay, ay. I can't get in. Hold on. I have to stick my hand on the other side of the cables and then pass it to myself. Maybe the trick is to not try and go too heavy. Curious to see if that will cure in place or if it will all fall out. Maybe I'll give it a little something to stand on here to help hold it up. Sorry, my camera work is less than spectacular. I'm holding the camera in one hand because there is no level surface up here that I can set it down on. And uh, trying to spray with the other. Okay, you know what? That's not too bad. This might work. I've used spray foam before and I will say that uh, a little mist of water definitely helps the product uh, stick to the surface. Okay, that was a good application. That was very satisfying. If I'm able to do this all the way along and the test will be come back in half an hour and see if it's all fallen out. <laughs> but if I'm able to do this all the way along, that will uh, that'll work well. And afterwards, I'll just buy a little shaker can of uh, flat black paint 
and um, give it a quick dusting of flat black to, uh, to hide it. This could work. Well, that's really unfortunate that that fell off while I was climbing down the ladder. Well, so far it looks to be holding and I've managed to make it, oh, about eight feet. I've now reached the section that sits above these cabinets and the ladder leaning up against them like that is not safe. It's, uh, it's very slippery on the bottom and using it like an actual step ladder uh, doesn't really get me close enough which means I might have to crawl up on top of the cabinets, which means that I'll probably have to throw down a sheet of plywood or something over top of the cabinets themselves, because the way they're constructed, it won't, um, it won't hold my weight. They're individual cabinets and uh, not a single unit with a, with a complete top on them, like that. One can has taken me a third of the way. There is a little bit left in this first can and finishing that off might get me another foot or two. You have to be patient and work and move forward in small increments. You can't rush this process. A bit of technique involved, I had to figure it out. I didn't think that the spray foam would work, but it actually is sticking and staying where I need it to stay second can will definitely take me almost all the way to the end if not the very end so I'm pleased but it's noon and I'm also hungry so I'm going for lunch well at the end of the day I need one more can to finish off this last oh maybe 11 foot section so I'm off to get that now before I go I want to do a test shot of some flat black paint on that uh, piece of cured foam. You just want to make sure there's no reaction to it and it's going to melt it or something after going to all that work of putting it in place. Well, it doesn't look like it's doing anything nefarious. Give it a few minutes and let time tell. came back after an hour or so on that little test piece that I sprayed and it didn't make a scratch in it. So I'm uh, confident that this will work very well. It's glossy right now, as you can see, but uh, it'll dry flat. Yeah, it's another job I can cross off the list. Thanks for watching.